So here we are at Los Pinos Fly Shop and I need new waders. My Sims wore out after a couple of years. So, and I figured what better chance to do a fishing video than to actually go through the way that I would pick uh, waders so that you'd have a chance to know what to look for when you go into a fly shop. So the number one thing that you wanna do is take your time when you uh, go and choose waders. Waders are super expensive nowadays. You don't have to get the expensive ones, but a good mid-level waiter was will uh, is worth its weight in gold. You don't want to have to get a cheap waiter and then go to the river, or go to the lake, and then have your day completely ruined because your waiters are leaking. So, the first thing you want to do is actually wear the stuff underneath the waiters that you're going to be wearing when you fish. I know it can be kind of embarrassing, but um, for instance, today I'll be stripping for you. I have uh, my fleece pants on, so. Now the river that I fish on the San Juan, it's usually 40, 42 degrees. It's usually cold, so I wade her up. And in the summer, I, I wear something to wick away underneath the waders. But in the winter time, in the fall, I wear fleece underneath my waders. So today, I'm going to try on waders, and I've worn the actual fleece that I'm going to wear on the river. That way, everything that you try on is kind of adjusted to the way that you're going to be fishing on the river. So my underlayer fleece, usually I'm layering up on top, but I'll wear my waders underneath my layers. So I'm not gonna put a lot of wet layers on up top. Usually I have a thick jacket on up top, but I have thick socks. So I have the same kind of thick wool socks that I would wear uh, with my wading boots. That way I make sure that when I put the new waders on, the booties or the stocking foot fit perfectly with the socks that you're gonna be wearing when you actually fish. So these are the Sims G3s. They're pretty close to the top of the line. The top of the line is um, a lot more expensive, but they do have a zipper in the front, which makes it easier to you know use the bathroom when you're on the way on the river or to get in and out of your waders. I fished the guide waders for 15 years and then had a pair of G3s that lasted me a couple years. So I'm gonna go with um, something that's sort of upper middle of the line as far as Sims goes. The zippers are cool. Um, I know people have had them for years and years and they've never leaked. It's just that they're too, more expensive than what I'm willing to pay for them. So this is the first time that I've ever put these waders on. And I'm gonna do everything the same as if I were getting ready to go fishing for the day. You can adjust these suspenders. I don't find that they usually need adjustment. These are gonna have to come down a little bit, but what you wanna make sure is that you have a lot of room in here so that when you put your layers on, uh, you're gonna be able to, to fit the layers on underneath. And then one of the things that is so important to me is most of the time I'm bending down to land fish or to look at bugs, to pump stomachs. So make sure that when you get waders, you kneel down in them and make sure there's enough room in the crotch. Make sure that the knees, you're not getting binded up in the knees when you kneel down. You know, when you kneel down to net a fish or to get your stuff off, make sure that the um, chest part doesn't come up too high. I can adjust these suspenders. They're, they're kind of high on me now, but let me see the waving belt. So I, I actually like the way these fit. I like the way Sims fits. Um, they tend to fit a little bit tighter around everywhere, whereas they're not as baggy and some of the other brands can be baggy and just one size fit all. But um, these are Gore-Tex. Another thing that Sims does really well is 
The breathable membranes that other companies will use are breathable. I don't think they're as breathable as Gore-Tex. I own, I've owned both of them throughout my career and the Gore-Tex ones have breathed a little bit better. Um, they've been a lot more durable, uh, except for the last pair, they've been more durable than uh, other pairs, but I've adjusted the suspenders and adjusted the uh, belt. So these feel comfortable. I just want to make sure like when you're hiking in, you know, you're going to raise your your legs high that there's no binding around the knees that the groin isn't hiking up too high and that when you're you know you want to practice casting you're gonna do you're gonna live in these waders if you're like me so I want to make sure that they're super comfortable another thing is uh, take your waders down because probably 90% of the time I end up wearing my waders as hip waders so I take them down I still have my belt on and then I just loop my suspenders around like this and and then buckle them up so make sure I can fold this part down into the waders make sure that this isn't too bulky and that this is comfortable that you can still move around as well so the one of the other super super most important things is take your wading boots with you uh, to the fly shop a good fly shop should be cool about letting you do all this you're going to spend like 300 to 800 dollars you want to make sure it's such a big fly fishing investment that you want to make sure you get exactly the right waders for the gear that you already have so these i don't have my wading boots these are pretty much like mine uh, these are the sims boa guide boots a lot of the there again a lot of the companies that make boots are going to make boots the same uh, I like the corkers because I'll use different soles depending on if, if I'm in somebody's boat or if I'm wading a river that doesn't need studs. But you want to have your thick layers underneath, your thick socks, and make sure that the booties on your waders fit where you have enough room to move your toes. So you should have probably like a half an inch to uh, a little bit more, three quarters of an inch of room on your toes part so that you can move your toes while they're in your stocking foot and while you they're in your boots because being able to move your toes will keep your feet a lot warmer than uh, any socks will if your toes are cramped at all when you put your stuff on then that's not the right size for you so these are the guide boas everything's going to be sort of sort of tight so what what I do is uh, I put my um, wading boots on and then I slip the heel out and I move my toes so that I can get more of the neoprene stocking foot to be near the toe section. I don't want my toes to be um, in there tight at all. And remember that when your wading boots get wet, they're going to get bigger. So you're going to have a little bit of wiggle room to play around with. So the BOA system on boots super nice I've used them for the last six years or so or so and it'd be super hard to go back to laces I bet 60 70 percent of my fishing is done in the winter time when it's freezing and uh, I've been fishing where my laces completely freeze up and I can't get my wading boots off sometimes you got to go in the car let yourself thaw out until you can get your wading boots off the boa system in like 17 degrees 14 degrees temperatures has popped loose and I've been, I'm able to get my wading boots off without having to uh, get frozen laces off. Another thing is if you leave your stuff outside in the winter time, the laces will freeze up. The BOA system doesn't freeze up as much. The drawbacks of this would be just durability. Um, they say that uh, the BOA cable can break, so I carry a an extra cable with me for the last five, seven years and I've never had a cable break. And, my year of fishing of 100 days, 130 days, 150 days is a lot more than most people are going to do. So if I, if I fish in this for a year and I put this equipment through uh, the harsh test of guiding and the fishing on my own, you can bet that it'll last you a long time as long as you take care of them. So the last thing to do, I don't, I'm not for this feature on any waders that they've done, but you can't get away from it now as the attached gravel guards. Um, I just think that they're one more thing to leak. They're another thing to sew on to waders and it's another place for your waders to leak. But uh, these ones don't have the loop that attaches them to your laces, which is actually good. 
because all that loop did was catch your fly line you know when you're stripping streamers and or a sinking line your fly line is at your feet it's going to get caught on anything that's down here so the least amount of buckles and straps that you have down here are the better and this fits perfect i can move my toes i can uh i can bend down there's still plenty of room in my knees my calves have plenty of room and the boots the stocking feet on the boots feel comfortable enough that i can move my toes and my feet around but snug enough that you're going to have ankle support when you're on the river and walking around those rocks so that you don't twist your ankle uh, if you're looking for boots i'll probably do another video on those but um, lighter weight I, I think the lighter weight is better i think a lot of people are starting to hike to their destinations now or hike a little bit so being able to hike in your wading boots makes a big difference so here we have Tom from Los Pinos Fly Shop, and he's gonna go over some of the features of these waders, but also some features of the Sims line in particular. And maybe he can give us some insight as to what people look for when they go into a fly shop or what kind of warranty problems he's seen as far as waders, or in particular, how to care for waders. I think a lot of people will leave these folded up in your trunk and not dry them out or not clean them off well. And that'll end up having your waders wear, wear prematurely. So usually to keep your waders intact and running as long as possible, there's a couple of things that you can do. Uh, first and foremost is taking care of the stocking feet down below. When you're changing in and out of your waders, whether it's at the cabin or on the river itself, you don't wanna be walking around on the, the bare ground or the asphalt in your stocking feet. You wanna change out on a mat that's not um, has any any contact with stuff like rocks or anything sharp that's going to poke holes in your stocking feet. This is a great way for you to prematurely uh, wear out your waders. And with Sims and their Gore-Tex lineups, so the G3s, the G4s, you can send these in for warranty, but it's going to be putting you out of your waders for a period of time. Some of the other things that you can do to keep your waders intact is making sure that you wash them after every use at a minimum taking a garden hose and getting the river off of them and allowing them to air dry completely before you put them away not hanging them by the suspenders is another great way to wear your waders out is hanging them up by the suspenders the weight's going to stretch that elastic out sims has the two front clasps being a, a male and a female and they actually disconnect and connect to each other and the front clasps don't have any elastic to them so this is a great way you can connect them together and hang them without stretching your suspenders out some of the other stuff is when you guys are out on the river and you want to sit down and have lunch and you sit on a rock or a log or something like that try not to slide off of the rocks or logs this is another area that you see a lot of people have some warranty issues with some pinholes or ripping of seams in the backsides and it's just dragging off of rocks or logs or something along those lines um, the great news with Gore-Tex is they're actually easy to figure out where they have leaks from all you got to do is you turn the waders inside out and then you spray them with what's called denatured alcohol this is something that you can find at Lowe's and Home Depot or your local hardware store and you spray the inside of the waders and it'll actually create a dark pinhole. And this tells you exactly where your waders are leaking from. And then you can then yourselves do your repair work. Because it's not a matter of uh, if your waders are going to leak, it's a matter of when your waders are going to leak. I mean, even the best waders are going to develop pinhole leaks after a while. And being able to find them without having to fill your waders up with air or fill them up with water and then press them. Being able to just spray it with alcohol and then find them and hit them with Aquasil makes a huge difference because it's the kind of thing you're going to want to do that night after you get off the river so that you can use them for the next day on the river or the lake. Yeah, and so that denatured alcohol, it's going to do two things for you. It's going to let you know, A, where your leaks are. B, it's going to pre-clean the surface for you so you're ready to do your Aquasil. Or, you know, if you have a cluster of small pinholes, you can also do a patch just so that you're covered. Um, where this won't work is if that is in a high stress area like the stocking foot where the neoprene is at or um, you know a, a high flex point like the knee you know a patch is going to be a temporary fix but something that's going to probably be better to be sent in for a true warranty repair yeah. how about some of the features of the g3s in particular that people would like so starting at the top with the new g3s some things that they've done differently i'll have jude spin around real quick they've updated the suspenders they've given you this new meshing web that distributes the weight of the 
the waders themselves a little bit more so it's less wear and tear on the angler's shoulders they give you a strap in case your buddy needs to pull you out while you go swimming a little d loop ring here you can uh, put a magnet for your net back here and then uh, multiple adjustment points for your belt and it's a single loop in the back so that it's nice and easy you don't have any um, front ones that you have to deal with with the thicker neoprene belts that they have then some of the stuff on the front, they have the flip out waiter pouch. This is an area that you can put your cell phone, you can put a tippet tender. This is also changeable, it unzips. So for the folks that don't like it there, or somebody that wants to upgrade and put on, say a waterproof pouch, to protect that valuable cell phone or that really expensive key fob. This is an option that you have to change out. They also have zippered side pockets and a front pocket here, so you can stash accessories, floatant, put your cell phone in there, something like that. It's also fleece lined on the inside, so yeah, and the, keep the, you nice and warm. This is actually super nice. Um, this is something relatively new, like the last 15 years or so. And uh, when before you see me do this a lot, you see because this is this is how we had to do it back then. Is waiters had no pockets, there was nothing in front, so you on a cold day you tuck your hands in here now this fleece line pocket makes it nice so what i'll do on winter days is i'll stick a couple of hand warmers in here and it'll keep my core warm but then it'll keep my hands warm too i'll dry them off on the fleece um, this pouch in particular i've never really used i zip it off and then i never use it again anybody who knows if you all this pouch is good for i think is to get pee on it when you go and pee in the willows and stuff it's a perfect catch plate to just catch your pee when you go, go to the bathroom. But um, this one I use a lot. I'll put my phone in there. I'll put floating stuff that I want to get to without having to get into my vest. The wading belt, uh, it really helps. Sims does a good job of, of putting a good wading belt in right away. Uh, when I used to have uh, less expensive waders, I'd buy a belt aftermarket because it was a lot better. These ones stretch, but they don't give enough stretch that you're going to have to worry about falling in and filling your waders up. Um, the Any waders that you buy, whether it's Sims, Patagonia, or Orvis, you want to make sure that the knee part is super reinforced. This is the part that's going to see the water the most, the brush, the rocks, all that stuff. So anything in your knee should be super reinforced. I like the fact that these are reinforced all the way up to the waist here. Because I sit down a lot, you know, um, sit down to film, take pictures, or to tie flies. I'll wear these in the boat on the winter time. In the winter time, and the part that's on the butt gets worn a lot because I'm I'm constantly rowing back and forth, and that can make a big difference to have reinforcements there. There are all these little tricks that you learn from being on the water for 30 years. You know that we're lucky that we have all of these innovations now because. We had to do a lot of this stuff on our own, you know, have fleece towels and we had to have patches and neoprene waders and everything has come so far that it's expensive, but this is the kind of thing you don't want to skimp on this thing and glasses because uh, it can ruin your day completely. Yeah, and um, it's not meant to be a Sims commercial. I'm buying these. Uh, I'll tell you the truth about Sims. I, Sims is one of the things that I've stood by since I started fly fishing. I have it a pair of Sims that lasted literally 15 years. We're probably talking like 3,000 days on the water. Never leaked once. My last couple of pairs haven't been as good. Um, who knows what, you know, COVID, supply issues, who knows what that was. Maybe I got a bad batch. But um, having said that, a year and a half, two years of my last waders lasting without leaking means what probably 300 days 400 days so it's more than the uh, normal person would put on their waders in a lifetime so that's a lot of use uh, the reason why we're doing sims is because sims i think has kind of set the bar to where a lot of the other companies are catching up and they do offer the fleece line pockets and the attached belt loops and uh, not Gore-Tex, but their breathable membranes have gotten a lot better so it's not like uh, you have to buy sims to um to have waders that are durable and that work really well. You know, Sims is kind of like the bougie kind of, it has a reputation. And I, I think that if you if you have Sims waders, everybody kind of looks at you like an Orvis thing. But for me, they've worked for the last 30 years and um, I'm gonna try them out again. This, this'll, this'll be the hair that I get and I'll give you a review on how I feel about them in the future.